Statistics and Excel, hypothesis testing one tail lower where the standard deviation of the population is known. Get ready and some coffee, because if we want to get realistic, we need statistics and Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six pack shirts, a must have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six pack like shape which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, answer key. The practice tab having pre-formatted cells. So you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab. Have. The one we will be working on, as you can see, is blank. We'll construct this from a blank worksheet, practicing our Excel tools as we build it. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be building. Looking at hypothesis testing, where we have a one tail lower, the standard deviation of the population is known. We'll talk more about that shortly, but it is similar to recent example problems in that we're trying to find information about a large population. We, of course, can't test every item of the population because it's just too big. Therefore, strategy, take a sample, hoping that we can apply the findings found from the sample to the larger population. Two methods typically used to do that, one being hypothesis testing, the second being confidence intervals. Hypothesis testing, what we will be doing here, lends itself to situations where we think we know what that middle point is or have an idea of what it should be, such as in our case, where the bottle of ketchup says that it has so much ketchup in the bottle of ketchup, that will be the hypothesis that we can construct our graph around. Then when we take the sample, we can see whether or not the sample is far enough away for us to have enough evidence or think that we can reject the original hypothesis. The second method, lending itself to situations where we don't know what that middle point is, would be the confidence intervals, in which case, the results that we get from the sample, we are going to basically use as our center point to build then around it some kind of confidence interval. So here, of course, we're using hypothesis testing. We're going to imagine we've got that bottle of ketchup. It says that there's so much in the bottle of ketchup. We're going to imagine that we are a skeptical consumer of ketchup in our case saying, hey, I think they're cheating on the ketchup bottle and actually filling it up less possibly trying to basically save money and so forth. So our then our idea is that there might be less ketchup in the bottle than is claimed by the company that's being printed on the bottle. And that's what basically we are going to be testing. That means that we are looking at the tail to uh, the left because we're expecting that if it's somewhere out here, there's going to be less ketchup. We're not really concerned with something an error being made on the right so if they say there's 17 ounces of ketchup or whatever we're not really looking at the right to say there's more ketchup because then they would be providing more than uh than uh is said on the bottle we're kind of skeptical that they might be providing less and that's why we're looking at this tail on 
the left hand side. So that's going to be our general scenario. We're going to create the population first and then we'll we'll create the sample. We'll take a little, little look at some formatting to create the hypothesis test using some symbology here and uh, that's what we'll do. The practice tab has free por formatted cells, pre-formatted cells so that you can work the practice problem with less Excel formatting. But we're going to be working over here with the full blank worksheet, starting this from scratch, laying down the foundation as we always do, selecting the entire worksheet with the triangle, right clicking. We're going to format those cells, format the cells. I like to lay down the foundation of currency, negative numbers bracketed, no dollar sign, no decimals to start off with. We will add the decimals as needed. And then I'm going to go to the home tab and make it bold. You don't have to do that, but I think it works better uh, for uh, presentations. I'm going to put a title on it, just calling it hypothesis testing. If I mess up the spelling, I apologize. It's going to be a one tail lower STD standard deviation of the population is known. So that's going to be the ideal one tail lower because we're concerned with, with them underfilling, not underfilling and overfilling in our case. So it's a matter of perspective. We'll look at a different perspective in a future presentation. Why is it important to think of whether or not the standard deviation is known or not? Because if the standard deviation is known, then we're more likely to be able to use the uh, the normal distribution, even if we have a relatively small sample size, because we know the standard deviation of the population and can use that in our formula to calculate the standard error. Remembering when we think about the standard deviation, we have the standard deviation of the population, standard deviation of the sample, which might approximate the standard deviation of the population. But even if the population is not normally distributed, we might be able to use the concept of the bell-shaped curve because of the central limit theorem, thinking of the standard deviation of all possible samples of whatever sample size that we are simulating with a formula. All right, so that's going to be the idea. Now, if we didn't know the standard deviation of the population, then maybe we would use t-tests, uh, which has a similar concept but the bell-shaped curve is a little bit fatter in the tails, which we'll look at later. All right, let's go to here. We're going to go home tab, font group. Let's make this black and white for the header. And then we'll just put some details here. We're going to say per bottle, uh, T L E the ounces of, we're going to say, or we're going to say it's honey mustard instead of ketchup mustard. I was saying ketchup, similar kind of concept. Honey mustard, though, because we're getting fancy. Uh, we're in the upper high class stuff. We don't catch up. We have, what do they call that fancy mustard? Uh, Grey Poupon. We're talking Grey Poupon here, man. Okay, whatever. So we're going to go 17 and the standard deviation of the population, I'm going to say is 0.5. Okay, and then, so what, what we think, so we're going to say, researcher thinks has a hunch uh, that the mean the mean is less than the label label says so that's that's why that's what's driving us to do the actual test we're saying hey i think these guys are lying and they have less ketchup in there than uh, they say, right? And it's probably because of the pressures of inflation lately. The, you know, they got the inflation and the, and, the, and the business owners like, what do you want me to do? I either need to put less ketchup in the bottle or raise the price. And they won't let me raise the price because they're, they're talking about putting price caps on like we're living in some kind of communist country or something. So I, I don't know how, I can't, it's either, it, do you want any honey mustard or not? Because if, if I don't raise the price or put less honey mustard in the bottle because of the inflation, then I'm going to go out of business and you won't have any honey mustard. That's how the economy works. But no, they don't, they don't understand hypothesis. So this is going to be the hypothesis. You think I'm price gouging with my honey mustard? I'm barely getting by over here. I get 
Dang business owners get no respect, man. I tell you, get no respect. Looked up my family tree, and there were two dogs using it. I'm telling you. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go into this one. I'm going to say right-click, and let's format the cells here. That was Rodney Dangerfield. This is a subscript. And so we'll make a fancy subscript of the null hypothesis, which is going to be assume the label mean is true. So we're going to assume the label mean is true. I'll make that uh, blue. By the way, if you don't have that blue, it's in here to standard. It's going to be that blue. So we're going to assume that the hypothesis is true. So notice what's happening here is we think we have a hunch that the ketchup or the honey mustard is low, right? But we're going to assume the hypothesis, hypothesis that the label is correct. It is innocent in this case until proven guilty. And then see if we have the evidence to say, hey, your label is mislabeled on the labeling. So HA, the alternative, we're going to call that the alternative hypothesis is going to be, let's make that black and white, black and white. And let's make this a subscript, right click, format the cells, make it a subscript. And then we're going to say conclusion. If the null hypothesis is rejected. So if we reject the null hypothesis in this case, because uh, we're in that tail area away from the middle point of the 17 ounces, we're less than 17 ounces significantly, then we're going to say, hey, this thing doesn't have 17 ounces of honey mustard, man. You're ripping us off. You're ripping us off. And, th and then what do they do? Well, they say, well, I can't raise the price because the government said I can only charge so much for honey mustard. And then what do they start doing? They start watering it down. You know that's going to happen. And it's not even their fault because like, what else, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? There's inflation. They price capped you. And then, and so you can't raise the price. And so, you know, there's going to be more air in the bag of popcorn. It's not, it's not my fault. Okay. I, I have to make, there's got to be some kind of profit margin or right, I'm going to make this red in white. It's like these people, they don't understand how the economy works. I mean, who, 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 who are you to come into my business and tell me that how much I should charge? What do you know about honey mustard for You've never filled a bottle of honey mustard in your life. Crazy politicians, man. I tell you, this is why we don't, this is why we, this is why we keep you out of our out of the business sector. You guys are crazy. What are we in Soviet Union for crying out loud? This that I ain't making two dollar two cents shoes over here or something. That's impossible. Anyways. All right. So we're going to make a population here. Uh, and this will be the behind the scenes data. So I'm going to go into the data tab into the analysis. And then data analysis. If you don't have this, look up how to how to add it or get it there. Uh, ChatGTP actually works pretty good with some of those instructions to turn that on if it's not on. And we're gonna say that we need to go to. I'm gonna do a random number generation. Okay. And then the number I'm gonna say one here. Number of random numbers. So I'm just gonna go with the 500. It's gonna be a normal distribution. We'll do a normal distribution because I would assume which a ketchup dis or mustard dispenser or whatever would be, it's gonna not be perfect, but you would think it would be normally distributed because this would be like an error kind of calculation, which is one of the classic examples of a normal distribution. But even if it wasn't normally distribution distributed, we might still be able to use the concepts of a bell-shaped curve given the central limit theorem ideas and so on. But in any case, we're gonna say the mean is let's say 17, 17 ounces, and we're going to say the standard deviation is 0.5. I hate when they do the watering down thing, man. Don't water down. See, now they're going to force them to water down the mustard. And you squirt 
mustard on your hot dog and it's just a bunch of of water it's gross it's gross but that's what's gonna happen and it's i can't even blame anyway whatever we're gonna put it into this range over here and then i'm gonna say so 17 5 let's go with that say okay there we go Ooh, that did it fast did i really do 500 of those yeah it looks good Mui b to the n maybe the smaller numbers it's faster at doing because it did that more rapidly than our hundred thousand dollar ones before but in any case i'm going to select that i'm going to right click and then i'm going to format the cells because it deformatted the cells i'm going to make it currency negative numbers bracketed no dollar sum i'll keep the decimals this time though because those could be important in this particular example i'll make it bold and i'll make it red and bracketed because this is the behind the scenes population that we know uh, they don't know about it in universe when they're doing the testing, but we know because we need to know we need to know as the reader of the book here, the creator of the story. So then I'm also going to say insert. Let's make a histogram just to see what the shape of that data looks like. Looks somewhat bell shaped as we would expect around that middle point of should be around the 17th. Let's just put this down here just to see that looks correct. All right. Now let's take the actual data. So this is what we used to create it. But now let's see what it actually spit out for us, which will be slightly different, you would think. Let's go and say format paint over here. And I'm going to say pop. Let's say this is going to be in, which is going to be the pop count or the number of population. And so I'll just use our count function to get that equals. There should be 500, but count. Let's just double check it population control shift down control backspace to go back up there's the formula enter 500 good pop mean and then we're going to say this equals the average of the population control shift down control backspace boom and then let's add some decimals so it's about seven what well, was almost perfect about 17, right? Not exact, but pretty close. Pretty dang close, I'll tell you what. And then the pop, and then the standard deviation, STDs of the pop, equals the STDs of the pop. STDs of the P, control shift down, and back, there it is, and enter. Let's add some decimals on that one. And then again, it's close, but not exact to what we put in the data because those are randomly generated numbers around the middle point. Let's select that home tab font group, red, white, bordered. Okay. All right. Now we're going to take a sample from this, which we could do by putting random numbers next to it and shuffling it like a deck of cards. We could just use these numbers as our random sample. Just take whatever a hundred of them or however many we want, uh, because they're, they were randomly generated, right? But I'm going to do an index function to do that. So let's go over here. I'm going to make uh, a format paint to the K. I'll put a count column. We're just going to do a hundred of them again. Let's number it so we can count them out. One, two, selecting one, two. Hold on while I buckle my shoe. Okay, I'm back now. And then I'm going to go on the fill handle and drag it down to 100. I don't need to do a sequence function because this isn't that far. A hundred, it's almost faster just to do it this way. So I'm going to say, okay, go back up. And then let's make this a little skinnier, double click in there, maybe a little wider, just in case I changed my size of the screen. Let's make this black, white for the header, black, white on the header. And then let's make this black and white too, because this is kind of like, I don't want to confuse that with the data. And then double click on that one maybe. And then, so this is the actual sample, sample numbers, which I'm going to get with an index function. So equals index of this these control shift down control backspace and so there it is and then comma well i'm going to say f4 on the keyboard dollar sign because i'm going to copy that down and i want the same range comma and then i'm going to put a rand between rand between and this is going to be first column which is this is row two but i'm going to call it row one because it's in the table one comma to the end row and there's 500 of them 500 close it up and enter it and close it up again 
And so let's add some decimals to be a little bit more precise. So that one had more ketchup in it. Let's count, let's count it down. Control sh or just double click. Boom, it's gonna keep shuffling round. But there's our data. There's our data. Control shift down. Control shift down. There's our data. Oh man, I wanted, I thought we were talking about like the Star Trek data. That's not the data I wanted to see. Home tab, font group. Let's go black and white. Our data is more interesting than Star Trek data was. Let's go, let's make a skinny. I'm going to make this skinny home tab format paint, make a skinny N. And now let's just re, let's reiterate our hypothesis here now that we have our sample. So I'm going to say H sub zero, which I'll do the sub soon. And then mu, I'm going to add the mu, which stands for the mean. So we're getting fancy with the symbolology here. This is the study of symbolology. I'm going to insert a symbol. And I already have it down here in my favorite. So you might have to hunt for it a bit. It's a Greek letter mu. But once you have it, it'll be in the recents. Okay, it's going to enter it. Close that out. And then I'm going to go back to this one, right click on it and format the cells, making it a subscript. So it does that. So that's going to stand for the hypothesis of the mean. And we're going to hypothesize that it's greater than or equal to this is going to be equal to the our hypothesis was the 17. So we're assuming that the number on the bottle is correct. And that if it's greater than 17, we're cool with that. But it's we're worried about when it's less than 17. Now, our so our alternative hypothesis of mu, I'm going to go back on over and say insert fancy Greek letter. Makes always makes things look more professional. You don't even know what you're doing when people say that. Like they don't even you don't even know what you're doing. What are you talking about? See how I used fancy Greek letters here? That's shows you that I'm legit, man. Okay, so that so the alternative is it's going to be less than 17. So I know that the equal is usually going to be in the um, in 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 the hypothesis, right? So then the other one is obviously going to go the other way. All right, so let's make this. Uh, let's center this. Tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm speaking Greek right here. I'm a scholar. I'm going to say, let's go, let's make some brackets around this thing and borders. And then this is going to be, let's say a equals alpha. So we're going to give it that 0.05 is what we're looking for. Helping us with our confidence. We can make that a percent like 5%, which is kind of a, you know, common uh and then and then uh and then we could say let's actually try to first make a graph because we have the information we need uh to make the graph actually we, we have we're going to need one more piece of information that's going to be uh the standard error uh in order to make our graph so let's let's actually keep moving on here so i'm gonna i'm gonna pull over on this side the STD of the population, just so we have it closer at hand. And that's going to be equal to this one. I'm going to assume it's this one. I gave it here in our, our starting numbers, but the actual population has this number, which is pretty close. So I'm, I'm going to pick that up. That's the one we're actually going to use. And I'm going to say that that is known. So we have that. And then we have uh, so that's, that's the one we're going to use. And then the mean is assumed to be the 17. Okay. So given that, let's make this, let's make this blue and bordered. Let's make this blue and bordered. Let's make a skinny R like it's a pirate. R we're going to say, are you skinny? R R and then this is going to be. Let's do the STDs of the sample. Now, we're not actually going to use this number because we have the standard deviation of the population. But just note, 
if I took the STD of the sample, boom, which is gonna be this one. Why did I go that far? Control shift down, control backspace. There is that. I'm gonna say, let's add some decimals. So notice it's approximating pretty nicely the STD of the population, right? So, but uh, we have the population. So I'm gonna make this yellow saying, hey, I'm gonna calculate that, but we're not actually gonna basically use it in essence this time because we have the standard deviation of the population, which we'll use to get the standard deviation of like all possible populations, which we're calling the standard error SE. N is gonna equal the sample size, sample size N. And so we're gonna say this equals, uh, let's just do a count, it should be 100, right? So 100, we did their sample, control shift down, control backspace, there's our formula enter 100 that makes sense x bar is going to be equal to the sample mean now remember the idea here is that there's a mean of the population there's a mean of the sample and then we can imagine that there's a mean of every averaged sample size right which is really kind of what we're thinking of using when we construct our bell curve but all of those means will tend towards the same thing it's the standard deviation where those things are kind of different so i can say well this is just going to be the mean of the one we know average of the sample so the average of the sample is going to be there's our average let's add some decimals for a little bit more detail and then we're going to say then that uh that's the average and then alpha or a we already we already established here was the 5%, uh, I already put that. So let's do the standard error, SE, standard error, which is like the standard deviation that we're actually going to use. So remember, there's the standard deviation of the population, which we know, but always might not be useful because we might not always have the data that's gonna tend towards a bell-shaped curve. Therefore, using the central limit theorem, we're gonna think of the standard deviation, not of the sample, but as though we're taking every combination of uh, samples of sample size 100 out of the population in our case, which was 500, which we just chose because that's not too large for Excel to kind of populate. And so that's what that's what this is calculating here. That's with our formula and the formula equal to the standard deviation because we know the standard deviation of the population we're going to be picking that instead of the standard deviation of the sample which we might use if we didn't know the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root square root of n which is the population size and so we're going to say enter it'll close that up for me hopefully let's add some decimals decimalizing it so there's the standard deviation in essence that we will be using for our bell curve. Now, once we have that, we can calculate our Z, which is gonna be our test statistic. Now, what are we talking about here? Remember that we're building our graph. Let's jump on over here. Our graph is being built around the central point, which is gonna be the central point of the hypothesis. And then our sample is gonna be something other than that. So now the graph, in other words, is going to be built around this central point, And we came up to a mean of this. So I can look at the, the Z test between those two, calculating the Z score of this, measuring it not in X's, but in standard deviations away from the middle point, which is the hypothesis of 17, calculating the Z of this is going to be equal to this minus the 17 hypothesis divided by the standard deviation the one we're going to use to build the bell curve which is the standard error enter adding some decimals decimalizing it boom all right and then so that's going to be the z so now we can calculate the p value p value so so now if we're imagining over here that we have this uh point that's going to be measured in, in terms of z's or now we measured whatever result that we got and we're comparing it to this point this we're, we're going to say is going to be representing the five percent if we look at it in terms of percentages so there's five percent under uh the curve over here 
So the p-value is going to be calculating the percent. If we come up to a p-value that is less than 5%, that would be because the point is over here, and therefore uh, it would be past that line, past kind of like this hurdle point, and that would force us or let us know that we can reject the hypothesis. If we come up to a p-value that is greater, then it's going to have a greater area, and so then we would not reject the hypothesis. So let's do that p-value calculation, which is going to be a good old norm.dist equals the norm.s.dist. And so we're going to be picking up the z. So we're going to pick up that z and then comma. And then we're going to want it to be cumulative. So one enter. There it is. Let's add some decimal. Let's decimalize it. So that's going to be giving us the cumulative amount up this way of the area up until the point of the Z, which we calculate our Z, which is based on this X, which is measuring how far away it is from the middle point, which is what we would call in Z score, Z zero point, right? And so then we could do a, like a logic test and say the if, so equals if, let's do a logic test and say if, tab this number is less than this number the 0 0.05 over here the alpha if that's less than alpha then uh what would we, we we're going to if it's less than than alpha then we could reject the null hypothesis reject the null hypothesis because it's far enough away if not then we not reject quotes and so then we can come up to a kind of a fancy formula like that and i could then say let's do a conditional formatting while we're here and say if this is equal to uh if this equals reject it's going to be red which it's not right now and then i'm going to say if it is equal to not reject then it's going to turn uh green so we don't reject it on green and we reject it on red. So not reject. So so because we're the null hypothesis, the amount on the label 17 looks good according to our test thus far. They haven't been lying. Uh, I do think that the honey mustard looks a little watery though. I think we should test how much ingredients were in are in it compared to before. I don't know but let's do then this one then is going to be the critical value kind of like uh the like kind of hurdle point so measuring in essence if i know this 0.05 which is the area under that little bit i want to get to the hurdle point uh measuring in z's is what this is going to get to so i'm going to say well this is going to be the norm dot s dot inverse this time of uh the probability of the five percent and we're going to say enter and let's add some decimals doot, 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 doot. so that's the point that then is going to be our our point over here right that we have to basically clear the hurdle point we'd have to get past that going this way which we can measure either in z's or in x's right but we'd have to but we measured it here in z's and if we we're past that point then uh then we might be able to reject the null hypothesis. If not, no reject. How can we put that in a logic test? We can say equals if tab this number, which is the re result that we got, not in X's, but in Z's. If that number is less than the hurdle point, because we're on the left side of the graph, then comma, what do we want you to do if it's, if it's less than that point? we can reject reject close up the brackets if not comma what do we want you to do say not reject in quotes and enter and we should come up to the same thing as we got up here let's format paint this one so i get the format painting home tab and boom so these should be two different ways to see basically the same thing Let's make this blue and bordered. I'll put some borders and some blue around that. And let's put some border blue around this. Border blue around this. 
put some border around that, around that, and around that. Okay. Now let's make a graph to get a better concept of this. So I'm going to make, I'm going to take this skinny and pull that over here to make a skinny V. And then I'll do it this way again. I'm going to start with my Z's again, because I think this gives us a more detailed graph and just go from negative four standard deviations or Z's, negative 3.99, and then add some decimals. I'm going to copy that down or uh, use the, the fill handle till I get to the positive four, which is a ways down, but not too bad because you can go like hyper speed. So I could use a sequence function to do this, but I feel like as long as you, you get the stop and it's starting this ways, not too shabby, not too shabby. And I don't really mind a little bit of shab, you know, as long as it's not too shabby. The two part is important. Does it need to be squeaky clean? A little shab is acceptable. It's just that when the shab gets too shabby, that's when we have a problem. Okay. That's when we have a problem. All right. So now let's go to the X then. So if I know that's the Z, uh, how could I get to our X? The Z represents how far away from the middle point we are in terms of standard deviations. So we're going to say if this is the middle point, 17 of our graph, we're going to add to that the negative, which is basically subtracting it, negative that times, uh, uh, we're going to add to that times the standard error, which is the standard deviation in essence. Boom, there's our X. Let's add some decimals. Double clicking on it, anything that's not in column W, I'm going to make absolute. So I'm going to put my cursor in Q1, F4, dollar sign before the letter and the number, T4, F4, dollar sign before the letter and the number, enter. Then I'll just double click it down, double click it down, fill handle button, control shift down. Looks like it went all the way. So that looks good. So now I can take each of those X's and calculate the P of X to get our percentages. This is going to be our good old norm dot dist of that X comma. The mean is going to be this mean, the middle point here, F4 on the keyboard. So I can copy it down comma. And then the standard deviation is going to be this one because this is one we use for our graph for a bell curve. F4 in the keyboard, comma, cumulative, no, therefore zero instead of a one. Close it up and enter. Let's decimalize it do, or let's percentize it and then decimalize it and then double click the fill handle button. Copying it down, control shift down to double check it went down. Control backspace back up to go back up and then black, white, center. Let's go ahead and control shift down, control backspace and make a graph out of this thing. Let's do that. Let's go to the insert. We could do just a bar graph just to test it out. We could do a line graph, but we're going to go with the full area graph, area graph, all graphs, area. That's the one. That's the one. You're the one, Wyatt. Don't let them get you too, brother. There's crazy people out there. I tell you, <laughs> we're going to copy. We're going to take that's from, that's from tomb, a move tombstone. I don't know why that's in my head right now. Okay. I know what I'm doing, Wyatt. I know what I'm doing. Okay. Let's go ahead. And then what was I doing? Now I forgot what I was doing. Cause I was trying to say, cause I was trying to prove I knew what I was doing. And now I forgot what, so we have this here. So let's go ahead to the data here. And then we're going to go into this one, this side on the X's and select these X's control shift down control backspace. We'll select this one and back out. So the X's populate movie B to the end. I like the Z's to populate down here, but I'm going to need another part of the graph to do that. So we'll graph the little triangle which is going to be populated as uh, a Z. The Z is going to be any Z less than that critical point is the cutoff. So I'm going to put a, a, a header here, a text header that's dynamic, fancy dynamic. So it's, let's just type it out first. It's going to be Z's got to be less than 
uh, Z's got to be less than this number. Z's going to be less than that number. And then to do a text, this I'm going to put a quotes around that because I need text there. And then I have to put an and between these two to tie it together. And that should do it. Boom. But then it's got all those decimals. So, but that's okay. I can go back into it and be like, I just go before this one and put a round in front of it, round it, downed it, round it. And then we're going to say, just let's go like three decimals out and then close it up. Boom. All right. I think that's movie B to the N, B N baby. And so then let's do a, a logic test here so that we can actually plot that. So this is going to be equal to if logic test, if this Z is less than this number, that's when you're going to graph it. What do you want us to do when the comma, what do you want to do when that's true? We want you to then give us this number. If that is true, if it's verdad comma, if it's not, then just leave it blank, we'll, but we'll put a blank space, put a blank space, quotes, blank space, end quote, close it up. Boom. All right, so there it is. Let's go percentify, decimalize, double click to drag to drop it down. Control shift down. So it did so it looks like it did what we wanted. Let's graph it and see if it looks proper, looks correct. Looks like it's supposed to look. We're going to say data uh, add another data labeling it that and then we'll select the range. I want my home on the range. What range are you looking for to put your home on? I'll give you the range. That's the range I want. Home on the range. Okay, that don't look right. That don't look right. Que paso. So let me let me go over here and say I messed something up because that's something ain't wrong. Something. Okay, I see what happened. So I dropped this down. That's because I need to absolutize. So I'm going to go back in here and that number that's in column T, F4 on the keyboard, making it absolute. And then I'll drop it back down. Boom. And then, okay, that looks more better. That looks more better. All right, I think that'll work. So now let's double click on this bit and add a secondary axis. Closing it up. It tries to put it over here. That's not where I want it. So I'm going to delete that. It always tries to do that. Uh, you should know me by now. Where's your AI intelligence, Excel? You know what I want. You should be able to understand my needs at this point. And then I'm going to go over to uh, the edit. And I'm going to put uh, another axis over here. The Z's control shift down, control backspace. And boom, boom. So there it is. And OK. And OK. Now I need to add it here by going to the plus button, axis, secondary, horizontal, but I want to put it at the bottom. So I'm going to say more options. This one selected, put it at the bottom. If you would lower it down, lower it down to where it should be. Again, Excel, I don't know how you don't know me better than this by now. You should be able to read my mind. How is it I... I shouldn't even have to tell you what I'm thinking. You should, you should know what I'm thinking. Excel for crying out loud. We, how long have we known each other? You still, you still making, you still making stupid assumptions. Okay. It's okay though. I fucking, so we're going to say the middle point here is going to be 17 uh, or in terms of Z's, it'd be zero. So we're at 17 or zero. That looks right. And then the hurdle point, the critical value, 1.6. We have the one tail on this tide, 1.6. I'm not too worried about the percents being kind of wacky up here because the, I'm just worried about the area of under the curve is what I'm kind of imagining here. The whole thing being 100% over here is being the 5%. Remembering that this 5% may look large because you might be thinking it should be matched over here. Because if we talk about 5% on a two-tailed test, 
then there would be half of 5%, 2.5% on each side. In this case, all of the 5% is over here, right? And then, and then we came out to uh, uh, a Z test, the middle point, it keeps changing here, but now it's at uh, 0.5 on uh, the, the Z test. Let's do it, let's do it again. So 0 0.08 on the Z test. So 0 0.08 is like way, like if zero is over here, uh, 0.08 is like way over here, right? So it looks like it's like our, like if this was the result of 17, our result in this case is right next to it, right? We came out to, well, in this case, we came out to 17. Let's double click on it again. 16.9, 16.8. Uh, seven nine. So we came out to dang near the same number. We're nowhere near rejecting it over here. We're like right around here, which would be a, a Z score of point uh, six two. So here's zero would be the middle point, and then like like point six two is going to be pretty pretty close to it to something like that or something so we're nowhere near over here so the so the ketchup company is like get out of here you you're some politician just trying to cut me down saying i'm gouging my prices i'm not gouging my prices i'm doing the best i can with these dang price controls these price caps and and this isn't how you run an economy in a free market for crying out loud get the government out of the business you guys don't know what you're doing i i'm if you want if you want ketchup you got to get you got to get the government out of the equation they don't know what they're they don't know you don't know how much you don't know how much mustard goes in a bottle of ketchup what are you what are you going to you're going to go up and down the grocery aisle and tell me how much tell the every producer that you know what the price should be are you that smart or are you going to rely on the market to do that kind of thing because no one's that smart. That's what I'm, did you, anyways, that's the idea.